Hello, this is Kathy Benninger, Nurse Practitioner with Ohio Health Pulmonary Rehabilitation. In this presentation, we will be talking about oxygen. When you breathe air into your body through your nose and mouth, it enters the breathing tubes and makes its way down to the air sacs or the alveoli. There, the oxygen diffuses or moves through the lining of the air sac into the bloodstream. You may not be getting enough oxygen in the bloodstream if there is an issue in the breathing tubes, such as narrowing or tightening, or the air sacs have been damaged or collapsed, or if there's not enough blood supply to the air sacs. People often wonder if they should be on supplemental oxygen. This can be determined by a simple test called a pulse oximeter. A pulse oximeter can be placed on the fingers, earlobes, or taped to the forehead. And readings are typically taken both at rest and with activity. Supplemental oxygen may be required if your pulse oximeter is 88% or below or 89% or below if you have heart problems such as heart failure. Oxygen flow will be increased until your reading is above 88%. The goal is to have oxygen levels between 88 and 93%. Most people do require different amounts of oxygen when they're resting or with activity or sleeping. To qualify for oxygen when you're sleeping, you require an overnight oxygen test, and your readings must be 88% or below for more than five minutes of the night to qualify. There are a number of systems for delivering oxygen, cylinders, liquid oxygen, and concentrators. When you're prescribed oxygen, you will receive a stationary concentrator like the one featured in the center picture. If you are using oxygen outside the home, you will be prescribed a small cylinder or one of the portable concentrators in the picture on the right. Oxygen flows from the oxygen system to the body through a hose. The most common hose is a nasal cannula. There are different types of nasal cannulas and there's also different devices that can be attached to a nasal cannula for people who require high amounts of oxygen. Nasal cannulas require basic care. Daily, you want to wash them with antibacterial dish soap and warm water and then allow them to dry. You will need a second cannula to wear during this process. You should change your cannula every two weeks or after a respiratory infection and change all extension tubings every th three months. Some complications of wearing supplemental oxygen include a dry nose. You can use saline spray or saline gel as needed, but never use petroleum-based products such as Vaseline. Nasal bleeding is also a complication and this is caused due to dryness. Again, use the saline gel or saline spray as needed. If this is not enough, talk to your oxygen company about adding a humidifier to your concentrator. Skin irritation can also be a problem. You can request a softer tubing. Uh, make sure the tubing is secure so that it does not slide and cause friction on the skin. There are also cushions and other protective accessories that can be obtained through your oxygen company. Lastly, you can ask for a different type of cannula. Oxygen itself is not flammable, but it certainly promotes combustion. So you want to be careful and do not smoke while you're wearing oxygen and staying six to 10 feet away from heat sources and sparks. You should post warning signs on your door or window so others do not enter your home while smoking. Notify your electric company of oxygen use so that you can be priority should you lose electricity and need it turned back on. Always turn off your tanks when not using them and store them safely and have a fire extinguisher and smoke alarm in the home. 
Again, use water-soluble lotions, lip balms, or lubricants on your face and lips. Oxygen should not prevent you from enjoying life. You can fly with oxygen, but you need to plan ahead. The rules for flying with oxygen are on the airline website. You will need to download a form and have your provider sign it before traveling. Additionally, only approved oxygen concentrators are allowed on the airplane. You will need to check the website and obtain one of these concentrators if you do not already have one from your oxygen company. You may want to consider renting or buying an extra battery as a backup just in case. And keep in mind, you cannot fly if you wear four liters or more oxygen, and you'll need to find another means of travel. Occasionally, your provider will want to see how much oxygen is going to be required during your flight and have you do a special test. If you are planning a road trip with oxygen, again, plan ahead. Contact your oxygen company and arrange rental of a portable oxygen concentrator to use during your trip. Request a car lighter charging cord so that you can keep the concentrator charged during your travels. You can also consider renting or buying an extra battery as a backup. If you're staying in a private home or condo at your destination, many of the national oxygen companies can arrange delivery of a concentrator or tanks during your stay.